This is a Shields of Shame exclusive. 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 Elderly Lois Howard, arrested by Canton police in Cherokee County, Georgia. Following a grocery store dispute, Howard alleges mistreatment, including being shoved into a police car, breaking her ribs. Chaos ensues at Cherokee County Detention Center as jail staff refuses admission due to Howard's injuries. Officers left her in the lobby anyways and fled the scene. Listen to the interviews and gather the facts and form your own assessment of the truth. Please visit shieldsofshame.com for behind the scenes content. Thank you for supporting our work. Also consider becoming a member. It's just 99 cents a month and you will have access to bonus content and early releases. Today's date is May 24th, uh, 2021. The time now is 1423 hours. In the room is myself, Sergeant Tiffany Cromer, and Officer Logan Overbay in reference to an internal affairs investigation. All right. So, first. All right, do you know what Gary is? I do not. Okay, we're going to learn about it today. It's a great thing. Okay. You are not the subject of this investigation. You are merely a witness of the whole thing. Okay. Um, so don't think that you're in here being investigated. You're just a part of the situation, okay? Okay. Um, that being said, I always tell people be truthful. Uh, look, I know you're an FTO, and I hate the fact that you are having to sit in front of me this this you know, early on into your, your career here. I don't want you to think that we're out here to hang people by any means. This came from outside. The sheriff's office brought it up. It was like, hey, what the heck? Um, so once that occurs, we have to at that point. Um, so unfortunately, that's kind of how this started. Okay. Um, are you familiar with the incident I'm talking about? So, yes, but no. But okay. what, what exactly is yeah, um, the investigation under? So, on May 21st, y'all went out with Lewis Howard and um, Jerry. Jo yeah, Jerry okay. Jones. Y'all left Jerry there with Salas and EMS, mm -hmm. right? Um, he pretty much said that they, that 329 and 348 forced her into a car, and now she's got rib pain and was saying. Lois Howard? Uh, said that they forced her into what car? Into the police car. They tried to, they took her to the ADC. Right. And she's saying that they forced her into the police car and now she's got pain in her ribs. Does she want to go to the hospital? Yeah. We've got fire headed out there. I just wanted to let you know. Well, I think she was complaining of her ribs whenever they were on scene, but... Okay. I'll find out from Leonard about what was causing her real pain. All right. All right. Alrighty, I just wanted to let you know. So, on May 21st, y'all went out with Lewis Howard and, um... Jerry. Jo yeah, Jerry okay. Jones. Y'all left Jerry there with Salas and EMS, mm -hmm. right? Transported Lewis Howard to the jail. At some point, a nurse refused to accept her into the jail because of a broken rib, so to yes. speak. At which point, Leonard became very upset about it, to my understanding. That's what we're talking about here. Okay, so she's the fact that she was upset and how and she how reacted? she acted. So okay. it's a unbecoming conduct situation, essentially. Just, or unsatisfactory performance, whichever. I mean, I don't like to stack people with crap, but uh, and I'm not saying that She's guilty of that right now. I'm not. This that's what an investigation's for. That's okay. what we're looking at. If that makes sense. I've watched videos. Um, I've I've seen things, but unfortunately, she has no video footage. Her video was cut off when she got in the car to transport Lewis Howard. Mine was still on though. Yours was. Um, and the in car, sort of. For some reason there's something going on with them. I'm trying to figure that out now. And there is video footage of the jail. Mm. I just received that footage. I had not even gotten to watch it yet. It, okay. It was like pulling teeth to get that. Oh, um, from from the jail. From the jail. Okay. So, man, you did a great job dealing with her. I'd have lost my crap on her, not the situation, her. 
That woman drives me insane. She's a handful. But you're calm. You're collected. You're the opposite of what Leonard was doing. And what kills me is the fact that you're the guy in training. This is your FTO. I love Leonard. I'll do anything for her. But how she acted is just... That's what our concern and our problem is here. So, if you will, start from the very beginning to getting called to Publix, okay? Start from the entire, the start, and take me through the entire evening. Okay. Um, of that account. I'm a little bit blurry on a lot of the things, you know, okay. you know, that have passed, so. Uh, okay, so we, we were leaving a call, <laughs> and we received the new call that those two individuals were at Hallmark. Not at Publix, but they were at the Hallmark sitting on a bench. And I believe the Hallmark um, person that was working there called it in saying that they had stolen things from the area before and they were sitting on the bench outside and they just didn't want them around. Okay. So, okay. to my understanding, they were not ct from Hallmark, but they were ct from Publix. Uh, and it didn't come to our attention until on the way there, we stopped to talk to uh, Rogers, okay. Officer Rogers, and she informed us that they had been CT from Publix. For some reason, we couldn't pull it up until she told us, and she told us where to find it at. So we knew the night before, we saw them at Publix. They were sitting on the sidewalk on a bench right in front of the Publix. So we knew we could 1015 off of that. So when we went up there, um, we, I'm sorry to backtrack, Jerry had not been CT'd, it was mm -hmm. just Lois. Okay. So that is why we did not arrest him. Fair so right. we arrested uh, Lois. I did while she was in the car. Uh, Officer Leonard was in the car. I... Why was Officer Leonard in the car, do you know? Um, I think she was just handling admin stuff inside the vehicle. Okay. And Officer... Salas. Salas was there. So we were handling the situation. She was doing something administratively in the vehicle. So I made the arrest, walked her back to the car. As I was putting her in the car, she got one foot into the back of the patrol vehicle and she just like dropped, you know, she just like dropped her body weight and then said that she had been hurt. Um, I'm not a doctor, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, but obviously before that I searched her. So I searched her, um, took the scarf off, or scarf off of her, her hat I obtained her purse that was in her, her cart, and I got her phone and a $20 bill, put it all inside of her purse, put that in the back of the car, and then I, I think I trans I did that at some point, I don't know when, I think I put her in the car and then got all of her stuff. Okay. Um, from there we transported her to the jail. At the jail, she was refused. Um, she said that she had been, her ribs had been broken either by me. At one point, I know she said it was me, and I know at one point she said her husband, or Jerry, had hit her in the ribs earlier at some time. So I throughout the night I'd heard both of those accusations. Yeah. Um, I hope I didn't break her ribs. I, I was very careful with her. I didn't yeah. shove her in the car. I, I was very careful with her. I watched the, the body cam, but I don't, I don't think you have anything to do with that. Okay. Um. Um, so once she was brought in, she was refused by the nurse. And Do you know what the nurse said? Were you there when that occurred? I was at the computers, kind of starting all the paperwork while she was, um, I guess, just coming back. I don't know where she was, where she came from or what she was doing, but I was kind of focused on like the admin stuff of getting the paperwork done and getting out of there. Mm -hmm. We were coming up on the end of shift, so I was just speeding things up. Trying to get there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I did see the part where he was like, no, she's being refused. And Leonard became... Um, more questionable, you know. She was just like, "Why, why is she being refused?" Okay. And she was pretty upset. Because this mm -hmm. has been going on right. for so long. They've been refusing. Like, I'd say, you know, two or three out of ten people get refused by yeah. us, and I think that was kind of like just like a final straw for her. What else did she say? She was just. I don't remember the verbiage exactly. I just know that she was really upset. She was kind of just questioning us, how can you tell if his, her ribs have been broken? Aren't you a nurse? You should be able to tell if she's fit or not unfit to be here. Just by someone saying that they're hurt doesn't mean that 
they can just get out of jail, you know, just by saying certain things. So it was, it was not that exact verbiage, but it was along the lines of that. Okay. Um, Did she cuss? I don't know. Okay. I would honestly tell you if I knew. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the verbiage again, I just, I was just trying to do my job and get the admin paperwork and get out of there. I was right next to her for part of it, like right next to her, Mm -hmm. but I don't remember exactly what she said. Okay. When you went and put um, Lewis Howard back in the car and came in to the, there was a deputy standing here, and it, she was standing right here. Yeah, so he was on, from she, my point of view, mm-hmm. he was on the left, mm-hmm. and she was on the right. Right. And I, I believe those two know each, like, they're, they're kind of like not friends, but they know each other, mm-hmm. and they're on good terms. And she was just expressing how upset she was about it, and he was like, I get it, but... It's, it's not, you know, it's, it's not, not on me, you know, it's not up to him. I, I totally get that, you know. Okay. All right, do you know who she was on the phone with um, when you came back into the jail? She was on the phone with somebody talking. Probably Sergeant Ayers. Okay. Right. Just letting him know that, that he got refused, or she got refused. What, where did the idea of dropping Lewis Howard off at the front of the jail come from, do you know? I personally had came up with that. Okay. Um, I think that, yeah, I think I just kind of mentioned at one point, and we had, I had done it before. Who did you do it with before? Um, I remember his name, but he was someone that we arrested for possession of meth out here in front of the PD. Brought him up there, and they refused him because of his high blood pressure for the second time. So, so you second were with Leonard Dalton. Yes, okay. second okay. refusal, and I we told them we were like we're gonna put him right in front of the the um, the jail. We're just gonna put him right in front of there. Okay. And they're like, okay. So we drove him around, dropped him off, um, and he walked along his way. Okay. Did you hear any of the jail staff say or instruct her not to put or take? The uh, Miss Lewis Howard to the front of the jail. Less, less of a demand, but more of like a plea. Like, please don't do that. Okay. Please consider subscribing, subscribing, subscribing. Okay, so this is what I need to explain. To you. Regardless, she's your FTO. She makes the decisions, whether it was your idea or not. You leave an officer. And an ambulance with a guy, old Jerry Jones, whatever that his name is, for heart pain. We've got a medical professional here refusing a female into the jail because of possible broken ribs. And we put her in a parking lot, a dark parking lot. We don't take her inside, we don't call an ambulance, we don't stay with her until someone gets there. That's the issue. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. What, we've got an ambulance and an officer here. We, we don't have that here. And that's a concern. We can't we can't just drop people, especially mentally handicapped, you know, female, elderly female. And this is the way it's been put to me, and I, I believe this, but would I drop my grandmother off at that jail parking lot knowing what comes in and out of that jail? No, I wouldn't. Not just to sit there and wait for somebody to come get her. Most people would say, oh, well, they're safe, you know. I don't know. At 1 o'clock in the morning, I don't know if that lady's safe in that parking lot. I can't, I can't make that determination, but at the end of the day, we have, we know that she's homeless. We get that. We know that she puts her own self at risk as it is anyways, but, and I, and we know she abuses the system. That's unfortunately, that's a part of it, but we still have to do what we've got to do and we've got to do it the right way every time. Does that make sense? I understand. You're an FTO. You're learning the way we do things here. If you see this is how we're doing it, you're going to do it that way. I know. I mean, why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Most people think this area is the most safe area. This isn't Cobb, by any means. It's not like you're getting dropped off in the front of the Cobb's, you know, ABC, which I promise you put that there. That's what we would do at Cobb. Okay. If we have something that refused, like, Mm -hmm. we didn't bring him, we didn't transport him anywhere else. We'd just drop drop him off in front of the jail. But it was rare that we got refused, though. I had never seen it like it is here, where it's like, you know, every other person. But, um... This is a Shields of Shame exclusive. So, exclusive. but the, pro, the, the issue is her behavior. That's not acceptable behavior. I mean, do you, would you think that's acceptable behavior for an FTO 
for someone who's going for, you know, their supervision? I mean, honestly, do you think that's acceptable? I, no. I think... I think that she'd been... She'd had been enough. dealing it yeah. with, with it enough, way more than I had. That was my second time dealing with her. Right. That may have been her hundredth time, I don't know. I, I, Maybe that was her, just her final straw, and that was it. I and know. I get it. But, we don't, we don't have to be that way. We gotta keep it cool every single time. And if we can't, hey, you handle her, let me just go outside and let me cool the heck off. I've had to do it as a supervisor, because trust me, there's been times where I, yeah, I, I, could, I could lose my job over something. I mean, it, it, it still happens day to day. It's, we're touching, touch and go here. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is what it is, but we've, we've just got, we've got to do better. Um, we've all got to do better, including, including her. So, that's about all the questions I have for you. Um, I'm not, I didn't make her who she is, but I had a part in it, so I know she's good. And I know that this was just a mistake, and this is something that happens, and it's, I mean, it is what it is, but when you're honest, we can come back from a lot. I've got all the faith in the girl, so I don't... Have you already talked to her? Uh, I can't share that. Oh, okay, sorry. I didn't mean to try to pry into anything. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> it's okay. It's not a problem. Um, but she's, she's a good girl, and she, she'll be all right. So. She's, she's a good girl, and she, she'll be all right. Today's date is uh, July 21st, 2021. The time now is uh, 4.52 p.m. And the room is myself, Sergeant Tiffany Cromer, and Officer Logan Overbay in reference to IA-047. Okay. Um, before I get into anything, um, since this is actually a different IA um, that spawned from the previous one that I had you come in on, um... I am going to give you a new Garrity warning, okay? Okay. All right. Um, so, again, let me just explain to you that this is a separate internal affairs investigation from 033. This is now uh, 047. Um, so, that being said, uh, I do have some questions for you regarding this internal affairs investigation. And it, again, stems from the... Uh, previous one that occurred on, or that was over the May 21st incident involving Officer Leonard and the jail and okay. um, Miss Howard. So, um, just going back to the 21st, okay, that night when y'all left the jail, um, there was a phone call made between Officer Leonard and Sergeant Ayers. Are you familiar with that phone call? I didn't know if it was Sergeant Ayers or Lieutenant Campbell was one of those two. Okay. Someone in command. Okay. All right. For sure. Um, do you remember any of that conversation? <laughs> I know. I know that Leonard was going to be giving, or what did give her, like, her intentions after leaving the jail, which was like, hey, you know, she was mad, but she was like, you know, we're going to go around the side, you know, the front of the building, drop her off, and we're going to be tonight. Okay. I think it was along the lines of that. Uh-huh. And which... Was that the conversation that happened at the jail? Or which conversation are you talking about? That was over the phone. Okay, and that was inside the jail? Inside the jail okay. with either Sergeant Ayers or Lieutenant Campbell, whoever was in charge that day. Okay. So I'm talking about a separate conversation when y'all left the jail and we're coming back here to the PD and y'all are in the car together. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember her getting on the phone then? Okay. No. When you got back here to the PD... Do you remember her being on the phone, putting anyone on speaker, having a conversation? I think she was talking to Ayers at that point. Okay. All right. Do you remember any of that conversation? Remember her telling no. them anything about the incident that occurred, that had just occurred, anything like that? I'm okay with silence if you want to just think for a second. Yeah, because I don't want to give you any wrong information. No, but I, I remember her... Definitely. Now you say being on speaker. I remember she was on speakerphone with either, like I said, Sergeant Ayers or Lieutenant uh, Campbell. But I'm kind of guessing here, but she may have just said, like, hey, this is what we did. And kind of laid out everything that happened. Okay. Did y'all meet with Ayers here before 
y'all left that night? I think you were maybe getting your stuff out of your car. No, you like, up. I remember we did not meet anybody before we left. You didn't meet anyone before you left? Did you? I don't think so. Did you see Ayers before you left? I didn't. Um, I was, I may have been let off before her because we were maybe... When y'all got back here that night, do you remember anything of that? Were you getting your stuff out of the car? I mean, what, do you remember anything from the point when y'all got back here? What do you remember about that? Like, like verbal discussions? Nothing. Okay. At this point, like this late in the game, I don't remember hardly any of that. How do you like... Had it been like brought up like a day or two after, I'd be like, oh yeah, this totally happened. But at this point, if I say anything, it's gonna it it's gonna be a guess, not like anything that maybe, I actually heard. Maybe this may help you, I don't know. But it's my understanding that he came here to the PD and did did ask for y'all to download your body cameras. Do you remember downloading your body cam body camera when you got back here that night? Of course. That's what I always do. You do? Okay. Um did Leonard tell you to do that? Do you remember? If or did you just come in and download it? Always. Um, I think whenever I come in the doors, I always put my my body cam on the the thing to be downloaded. So, not like so. Yes, I did do it, but not intentionally. Like, oh, I need to download this because I've been told to, or for this reason. I remember just always downloading my stuff whenever I come in. Okay. All right. If you will just take a second and think back and if you can remember anything from the time that you got here, whether it's unloading the car, what happened at that point, just um, try to jog your memory as best as you can. I know, I know that we were, I may have been running over hours, so they wanted to get me out of here. I remember coming back, putting my body cam on the, the porter maybe, and then, kind of like being like not rushed out of here, but like, hey, you know, you're over on hours. Let's you know get you out of here. And that was from Leonard. Do you remember if that was from her? No, I don't remember who it was from. I just like, whenever I'm told like, you have your hours, you have your hours. Like, hop on out of here. So. Okay. All right. Um. When y'all were in that car on the way back here, um. You said that you thought she was on the phone with the heirs or Lieutenant Campbell. Um, do you remember why she called them? No, I just know that... I know she either made a phone call while we were in the jail or while we were in the car or both. And during both those times she was explaining what was going on. I think while in the jail obviously it was like, hey, she's being refused. And I think when we were in the car, it may have been like, this is what we've done. Okay. We're heading back now. Do you remember any of that conversation? I do not. I just know generally that's what was said. Hey, this is what happened. This is what we're doing. Heading back. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, well, at this time, I believe that's all the questions I'm going to have for you. Okay. Um, I may have further questions, but uh, at this time, this is it. Do you have any questions for me? Um... I just like kind of concerning like this is I in my eyes like this is it's not something I would have thought have been like a a problem at all. Okay. So and this is essentially all I can tell you, but another IA stemmed off of that and that's where we're at now. The other IA is in the works of being completed. I mean, it's it's just something else occurred. Um involving someone else. Not at the jail or anything. This is like a separate entire... Same situation. Um, just different. That's okay. all I can really say on it. Um, but, uh, again, if you would, just please don't talk to anybody. Don't say anything. No one's asked me. No one's even been curious enough to even ask me about it. So it's been really easy not like... Having to say anything. Yeah. Um, okay. Shields of Shame has been told the body camera footage has been deleted by the Canton Police Department. A formal complaint has been filed with the Attorney General's office on February 7, 2024. This is the complaint that was filed. Dear Attorney General of Georgia, I am writing to bring to your attention concerning issues of open records violations and potential dishonesty within the Canton Police Department. On January 21, 2024, 
Mr. Billy Bloom submitted a request for body camera footage regarding a May 21st incident involving Mrs. Lois Howard. Mrs. Howard suffered broken ribs allegedly due to excessive force by officers Aaron Leonard and Logan Overbay, who shoved her into a police car. Subsequently, the sergeant on duty during the incident was investigated by the Georgia Post Council and subsequently decertified due to a lack of recollection of the events. Upon Mr. Bloom's request for the body camera footage, Ms. Karen Murphy responded, stating that there was no such footage available. However, Mr. Bloom provided a case summary wherein Ms. Tiffany Cromer indicated she had indeed viewed both body camera and dash camera footage. This inconsistency raises concerns about the integrity of the records provided by Ms. Murphy. Of particular concern is the treatment of Mrs. Howard, who appears to have been subjected to unwarranted targeting and excessive force. Despite allegedly being arrested for criminal trespass at Publix, Mrs. Howard was found seated on a bench in a shopping center a city block away, making the legality of her arrest questionable. Furthermore, the lack of any corresponding entry in the court docket suggests that she was never formally charged, indicating a possible abuse of power and negligence in the handling of her case. Given the seriousness of these allegations and the potential violation of Mrs. Howard's rights, I urge your office to thoroughly investigate this matter. Specifically, I request access to all relevant footage from the Canton Police Department pertaining to the incident involving Mrs. Howard, as well as a review of the department's policies and procedures regarding the handling of such cases. Thank you for your attention to this matter, and I trust that your office will take appropriate action to ensure transparency and accountability within our law enforcement agencies.